The critically acclaimed director of Pan's Labyrinth and Hellboy, Guillermo del Toro, is hard at work on his next project with a team of artists, writers, and designers who understand his dark sensibilities and dedication to sophisticated horror. Like you pimp, you pimp your monster up. <laughs> the project is called Insane, and del Toro predicts it will consume eight years of his professional life. But it's destined for the small screen. It's a trilogy of video games. The game itself is being kept tightly under wraps for now. But for Del Toro, it's exactly what he wants to be working on. There is no doubt. I don't need numbers. I don't need any proof. Uh, the platform and the art form and the narrative form of video games, uh, in the medium, is going to become an essential part of storytelling in the next century and this century. Del Toro has partnered with THQ and executive Danny Bilson, a screenwriter who crossed over to games and recently led the production of Homefront. As a longtime gamer, to him, the Switch was a no-brainer. You know, we'd rather be in it than watching it. It's escapist entertainment, and it's a deeper escape to be in it and to control it and to engage with it. It's sort of the next level of of fantasy. I think a lot of that is what drew me to it. LAPD, drop the weapon. Do you think I'm some kind of nut job? Writer-directors aren't the only Hollywood types to see creative opportunity in games. L.A. Noir features Aaron Stanton, who's a supporting actor in Mad Men. Action. So the guy's names that I've been seeing doing the repairs on the heaters, they're fully licensed and accredited. Some of your men aren't fully licensed. Here he stars as Cole Phelps, a rookie who works his way up to detective in the Los Angeles Police Department of the late 1940s. He's on a mission to right some of the wrongs. I mean, he was decorated while at war um, and considered a hero, uh, but, you know, there's a lot of uh, inner turmoil and conflict to sort through. Your main character is going to write itself through the actions of your gamer, and the outcomes of the game, to a certain degree, are dictated by your good or bad choices. So one of the things we emphasize in Insane is uh, the freedom to do things that are completely wrong or right, but they're in the hands of the player. Games started as reflex tests, like Space Invaders or Pong, evolved into mazes with Mario zigzagging and hopping across the screen. Now there are characters and plot to draw players in. That's the, the advantage that games have as a medium, and I think that Authors who come up with an idea for a game and want to script it and want to make it like a Hollywood movie have to come up with several alternative endings and they have to give the player the opportunity to make mistakes and go down a path they don't like. That, that adds a lot of replayability to the game. It makes it a much, much more robust experience for the gamer. Game executives hope that means more sales, more gamers who otherwise wouldn't be interested in the classic first-person shooter, and ultimately a better bottom line. I'm Raquel Maria Dillon, The Associated Press, Los Angeles.